Hey golfers, Drew Mahold here at Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter here at Second Swing. We're at the Minneapolis Tour Van location today. Uh, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Usually our club comparisons are a head-to-head -head comparison with two models. Today we're gonna put seven player's distance models to the test with the irons here. I have the Titleist T200. You've got the Callaway Apex and we've got five other models to, to pick from as well. We're going to go through all seven. You're going to hit a bunch of shots today, Thomas. But what do you think we're going to find? Yeah, so we're going to be testing Callaway Apex. The Cobra Forge Tech. The TaylorMade P790. The Ping I-500. Titleist T200. Mizuno MP20 HMB. And Strixen Z585. You know, I might get a little tired here by the end, but yeah, this, yeah, is, this will be a great test. I think this is really important to take a look and compare all what all the manufacturers have to offer. Typically, in a, in a club fitting, we will maybe compare three or four different manufacturers of player's choice, but today we're going to cover pretty much the entire range. So if someone is interested in, in this category, stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, I know we're going to get a lot of information out of this. Um, and you know, we're, the lofts are going to be a little bit different. I think we'll talk about that uh, as we go in the test. Yeah, so I'll try and stay as unbiased as I possibly can. I'll try and swing the same every single time. We'll see how well I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> let's get after it, huh? All right, sounds good. All right, Thomas, let's start with... Titleist T200. T200? Yeah. All right. So the loft on that, uh, 30 degrees. So it's kind of a little bit in the middle of the range of 7 iron, I would say, for a player's distance iron, right? Yeah, 29 and a half to 32 degrees is kind of going to be the loft that we're going to be covering okay. today. I'm um, just going to remind everyone as we're testing these, these are all going to be standard length clubs, all True Temper S300 golf shafts, Titleist probably 1X golf ball. So every, every single thing is going to be kind of as unbiased as we can possibly make it. Yeah. We'll hit five shots with each club, um, and then we'll kind of take a look at all, all the data compared to everything. T200 to start with. Thomas, you've hit five now with the Titleist T200. Initial thoughts after kind of our first club here? Yeah, they all felt pretty solid. I believe that last one on left that club face just a little bit open on it. Even still, though, it still kind of held its own. It still kind of went pretty similar to that same carry distance, which is really, really, really important. Even the ones those miss hits, mm -hmm. you want to have that consistent number. So yeah, pretty, pretty good overall. Felt pretty solid off the face. I'd say maybe a little firmer than what I'm kind of used to um, with it not not really being completely forged all the way across the face. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that's going to be the case, I think, with most of these, given that you know, I know you play kind of a forged muscle back type of iron. So yep. that'll be the case for most of them. But uh, I think now we can transition um, and give you the Ping I-500 now. Perfect. All right, Thomas. Now five with the Ping I-500 after five with the T-200. How would you compare the two so far that you've hit? The I-500 sounded a little bit louder compared to the T-200. Also, I'd say, you know, the kind of the cast feel you get with this club feels even more solid off mm -hmm. the club face. Feels like, you know, maybe the ball was maybe jumping off the face just a little bit faster. Um, overall, I was expecting it to go kind of around the same kind of distance. We'll take a look at that as we analyze all the data at the end. Yeah. But it looked like it was maybe just picking up a couple yards more over the T200. Now, I'm trying to be as unbiased, as yeah. robotic as I possibly can with my swing speed. <laughs> right. So, I mean, we'll you see got a lot of changes. Hit yet. But, yeah. um, so what did you think of, what did you think of the look of those two to start with? Um, I feel like the T200, a little bit larger heel to toe. I feel okay. like the I-500 is a slightly more compact looking club, you know, look, looking down at it, maybe kind of more blade-like, but no one is not like a complete player's blade. Right, so, exactly. You know, it's kind of like more that distance, you know, there's, there's some stuff built in here to make that ball go far. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's how, yeah. that's the player's category right there. Yeah. But uh, let's transition now to your third option, or your third club here. Okay. Cobra King Forge Tech. King Forge Tech. Cobra has 
recently kind of forayed into the player's distance category. Yep. And this would be their their uh, their offering in that okay. category. All right, let's hit five and see how this compares. Now this shaft is uh, AMT black shaft. It is essentially the same as S300, just so we could fit all, compare all different, all seven different manufacturers. Yeah. This is the exact same weight, exact same shaft as S300. It's going to perform the same way. It's going to perform the same way, exactly. That felt really good. All right. All right. And that's five with the Cobra King Forge Tech takeaways from uh, those five shots there and comparing them to the Titleist and the Ping that you hit previously. Felt really, really solid. Really solid off the face. I feel like it was, it was jumping pretty fast. Uh, I'd say size wise, it's probably the biggest club head that I've looked at down it so far between okay. the, the T200 and the i500 so far. Um, kind of the biggest profile out of them all. Um, I did make a couple of bad swings on that one, so I noticed the dispersion was kind of a little, little bit wider there. Um, yeah, the ball was still going. Just a little bit further than everything else is what you may expect with something a little bit stronger lofted. Yeah, exactly. That's what yep. I was going to say is a little bit more carry distance. Uh, this is what we're looking at on TrackMan right now. we got carry over total distance, and the Cobra was carrying a little bit further, and that's kind of what we should expect based on uh, the loft there. But um, now we'll switch to the Shrixon Z585. Okay. All right, Thomas, that was five with the Shrixon Z Z585. My first takeaway just from watching was that the baby draw was there for, I think, four out of the five shots. You weren't able to quite get that draw with the first three clubs. Is that due to maybe were you swinging like that, or did you think the, it had something to do with the club, and maybe the weighting, and you're able to kind of flip it over a little bit it better? It seemed like it was a little more workable. Uh, even the last shot, I, the last shot was a miss hit to me. I feel mm -hmm. like it caught a little bit heavy. Still went you know, decent distance. That's why I didn't turn over, because I didn't quite get that club face to release over. But even still, it didn't go kind of way out to the right. So mm -hmm. one thing I guess we'd take away from this club is, you know, it was definitely more workable. Uh, also maybe a little smaller profile than, say, a couple of the other larger club heads okay. uh, compared to hitting the Forge Tech that was a little bit larger, um, going back to this. But more kind of more like kind of more of a player's eye and look down as well, too. Sure. So. Yeah, and that's what you'd yep. expect, the smaller construction. That kind of allows for more workability, generally. Um, and that goes for any iron players or game improvement, whatever the case may be. Yep. Generally, you can work the ball a little bit better if it's a more compact shape. Yeah, I like that little right-to-left draw, so, you know. Yeah, I, like oh, yeah, that I know that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, we'll switch now to Callaway, the Apex 19. Oh, yeah. All right, Thomas. Callaway Apex, to me, was the loudest so far. I don't know if you agree or maybe you felt a uh, difference in terms of the feel as well, but I, yeah. that definitely was the loudest sound we've heard so far. It was very loud. It was pretty kind of clicky off the club face. Uh, I think my second shot I hit was went the same distance here below. I felt like it caught a little bit heavy. I think I had one shot in there that I maybe left a little club face a little open and went a little bit shorter. But judging by you know the, those shots, it felt like it was pretty consistent. Right. So yeah. Yeah, definitely some forgiveness there yep. too, given that you're talking about miss hits and looking at the you know the map right now. Uh, those orange dots are kind of you know they're still very bunched together. Yeah. Uh, so that's obviously good for for the forgiveness aspect of the Cal Apex iron. Um, I'd say this would be tied with say the i500 with the kind of looks. You know, this okay. is probably the smallest profile really? of, of all the kind of players distance irons that I've hit so far. Okay. So this I five hundred and the Strixon yeah. uh, Z five eighty five are probably my three that I've kinda like look of a little bit better so okay. far. Um this would be at the top for sure. Okay. So, Interesting. Yeah. And but it still has the had the loudest feel. It had a loud feel to it, yeah. It was clicky. Yeah. It was definitely clicky but um it went straight. So that that's always good news. Oh yeah. Yep. Absolutely. All right, from Callaway we'll go to TaylorMade. Yep. 
P790. Very nice. There you go. All right. TaylorMade P790, five shots. One thing I noticed right away just from looking at the map, looking at, you know, we've got the lofts. Um, TaylorMade P790, Ping I-500, and Callaway Apex, I believe, are the three that are 30 and a half degrees. And it looked there that pretty clearly the TaylorMade was the longest of those three. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I didn't really need to look at the map. I feel like I hit, like, the first one was a bad swing with this one. The next three or four were really solid swings. I felt like they were going pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Without even looking, I was like, oh, maybe they went a little bit further. And they did. You know, it was going maybe five yards further than probably its next competitor with at 30 and a half degrees, the mm -hmm. APAC. So it was definitely going a little further than that. And the I-500 was you know, right around the same distance as the APAC there, too. So sure. it was you, going about five yards further. Yeah. Where would you put this on the sort of, in terms of looking at it, the profile, on the players to distance spectrum? Is it more of a player's looking iron at address or more of a kind of distance or... Um, even game improvement iron, maybe. It's like a betweener. It's yeah, like kind of yeah. right in the middle. I'd say looks wise, I mean it's it's up there. It's a little larger, kind of heel to toe than like the Apex or the i five hundred is. Just maybe ever so slightly larger. Um, so that's why I wouldn't okay. you know I'd say those two may be slightly more appealing on the eye looking down at being a better player, liking the smaller club head. Yeah. But the results kind of speak for itself. You know. Four of those five that yeah. I hit there were basically dead straight every single time. And I felt like I hit it really, really solid. So. For sure. Yeah, clearly yeah. the Taylor made packs a punch. It does. Um, we'll finish up here with Mizuno MP20 HMB. Okay. All right. All right, Thomas, you just hit 35 golf shots. I'm worn out. <laughs> <laughs> I know in the past we, we talked about Mizuno MP20 and the MP20 HMB. And you've really liked the feel. Yep. Uh, what did you think about MP20 HMB compared to these other players' distance irons? And I mean, cause I, the sound seemed a lot quieter, more muted mm -hmm. than the rest of these, just from my perception. I don't know if that's how you also felt about them. It's pretty much spot on. By far the softest feeling mm -hmm. of all the um, kind of distance players' irons. Definitely soft off the face. Definitely, you know, more muted sound for sh for sure. You know, you love love the feel of them. You know that 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 feel, getting that feedback off the club face. You know, is very important mm -hmm. to me. Um, you know, it was pretty much what we what we see. Maybe going a couple yards less with regards to distance because it does have a little bit, you know, more loft on the club. But you know, it was look wise as well. You know, that that shiny satin chrome looking you know looking down at it you know it's it's pretty appealing it's definitely a very appealing club yeah yeah is it in terms of shaping is it smaller more like a player's iron known at, at address or does it have a little bit bigger size it's a little larger size uh i'd say i'd put it maybe in between like kind of your apex and uh p790 kind of sizing okay. so kind of right around there it's not the the smallest of them all but it's definitely not the largest of sure. them all either so yeah it's kind of right in the middle sure yep. yeah well let's look at the numbers here all right, Thomas, I know you wanted to maybe look at all the numbers, look at all the shots, and see if there was an outlier or two from, uh, yeah. from each club model here. So why don't we take the one outlier off per club? So we'll kind of keep your desk, you know, kind of your best four or five. So now we can kind of break down, take a look at all the averages between all the clubs here and see if anything kind of stands out to us at all. Um, first thing I always like to you know talk to my customers about is you know, dispersion. Mm -hmm. Dispersion with an iron is very important. You want to be as close to the hole as you possibly can on, on your shots. So what stands out to me right now, there's a, there's a couple of circles that are, you know, pretty pretty small. You've got, you know, pretty obvious one would be kind of your, your Callaway Apex, that orange circle. Mm -hmm. Notice how it's pretty small. It's pretty much dead straight right up the middle, um, kind of splitting left and right. And also a notice north to south, it's you know, pretty down. Yeah. So that definitely stands out to me. I mean, the ball is going the same distance every time. So that's, that's important as well. Um, TaylorMade P790 also stands out to me too. It was the furthest up the map. Um, and also notice it's a pretty small circle as well and also pretty straight. So those two kind of stand out with me kind of with regards to dispersion kind of right away.
you know, that's very important to take a look at that. Uh, what I'm curious to see is how well I did with regards to my club speed every single time. So yeah. that's, that's going to be an interesting one to kind of take a look at here. Try to be as unbiased as I possibly can, try and 35 swings, swinging the exact same, you know, see if I did that. Um, so if you take a look at tight this T200, the first one I did swing was 90.5. You know, I, I told you normally 90, 91 miles an hour is kind of how fast I'd normally swing my, my 7 iron, so that's pretty accurate. We've got a range from 90.5 to 92. 2.2 with the P790. So we're talking 1.7 mile an hour difference. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty good for th for 35 golf sh golf shots. So that you know, being a better better player, I'm able to kind of repeat my swing a little bit more yeah. to make this as you know unbiased as we po possibly can. Um, if you take a look at ball speed, I'm always curious to take a look at ball speed rather than club speed because that includes where you catch on the face and sure. see which ones maybe jumping off the face going a little further. Um, we look here at the TaylorMade P790, 131.7, uh, 131.9 with the Cobra King Forge. So King Forge technically and the P790, those two were kind of the highest ball speed of, of them all. Um, but it's always important to take a look at Smash Factor as well, because Smash Factor is kind of your efficiency rating. Yep. King Forge Tech, 1.45, kind of the highest Smash. Callaway Apex, 1.44, you know, kind of right up there as well. Um, my only concern with the King Forge tech is the kind of the dispersion. We know we've got a couple out here to the left and a couple out here to the right. Mm -hmm. So what stands out to me right now, probably leading the way, would probably be the Callaway Apex based on dispersion and also smash factor number. Sure. Those okay. two kind of stand out kind of right away in the numbers between everything. Um, it's always interesting to take a look at spin and see how kind of loft affects spin. So we kind of talked about there's a range of about was a 29 and a half to 32 yep. degrees. Typically what you'll find is with the club that has the highest loft, it should maybe spin the most. Yeah. So let's see if that actually does happen. So I believe it was the HMB it was. highest loft. So if you look here, 50, almost 5,400 RPMs. That was, it was, it was the highest of them all. So it was going, was spinning yep. the most out of and them all. I believe Shrixon Z585 was, 31 degrees, the second yep. highest loft, which okay. is, I mean, very comparable to the apex there, but very close to you got the 52, number two spot. Yep. Correct, 52.60. So Callaway Apex, with having a little bit less loft, it is spinning just a little bit more, so it's going to give a little bit of stopping mm -hmm. power there as, as well. So that's important to know, even though it has got a little bit less loft on it there too. Um, we also like to look at um, consistency as well. So if you look here, the Srixon 585, you're looking at spin. Notice the efficiency number there plus or minus 47. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of doing the same thing kind of every sing sing single time there too. So that's always important to note. The, what was it, the strongest loft was the forged tech, correct? Yes. Okay, so let's see if that happened as well. So if we look here, 4786, it was the lowest amount of spin. So science is, it's working, it's doing, it's doing its mm -hmm. job for us right now. Um, if we look in at carry distance between them all, You'll notice the highest carry on average was the King Forge Tech at 195, going 205. P790, 195, pretty much going 203. So because this had a little bit more spin and also was maybe flying a couple of feet higher, it could stop maybe one or two yards sure. faster. So my only concern with the Forge Tech would be coming in, you know, maybe not quite as much spin, a little larger dispersion. Even though we've got to go on the furthest, you know, I might, I might scrap that with regards to consistency. So I want to make sure everything is flying nice yeah. and straight every single time. Um, if we look here, my landing angle is great with all my clubs. With a 7 iron, you want to be over 45 degrees. Um, tour average is around about 50 degrees with the, the, with the 7 iron. I'm hovering around about 50 degrees every single yes, time. You are. <laughs> so that's pretty, pretty solid across the board. Um, if we look here, that the tight list and T200 and the King Forge Tech, those two kind of had the lowest landing angle and kind of the lowest height out of the ball. So they may not quite have as kind of much stopping power. The reason why the tightless T200 is going to be me just slightly lower is because it wasn't quite going as far. It was just going just a little, little bit mm -hmm. shorter, so it doesn't quite have as much time in the air to kind of reach that apex and stay and then kind of start falling sure. down. So all really kind of interesting numbers there to take a look at, look at everything. 
Um, I can't harp more on about consistency though. With with an yeah. iron, consistency is very very important. Um, so I'd say based on kind of your consistency numbers, and also you know this is a distance players iron category. So and also distance, you know, distance P seven ninety with consistency. If you're looking for just pure consistency, the the Callaway Apex was sure. probably my kind of one and two favorites today in, in today's test there between them all. Can't complain with the workability that I, I you know, the Callaway Apex, I felt like I hit a nice little draw every single time with when we were hitting shots there too, which is always important to note. P790 felt like it just flew really very straight for me as well. So like I said, you can't complain mm -hmm. with, with all those, those numbers there too. So Yeah, definitely in terms of performance, I think your favorites, TaylorMade P790, Callaway Apex, both distance, dispersion were both really high performing in those tests. Yep. I do want to make sure we mention to the sort of feel and look aspect of this because I know, you know, when you're fitting customers, a, lot, a big part of it too is, you know, what the customer feels about the club, right? Yep. How it looks at a dress, you yep. know, what presents confidence to them. Uh, and I know you had some preferences there in terms of a smaller club head is kind of what you prefer. And I know I think it was Shrixon, um, it was Ping, and it was Callaway were the three in this test yep. that you thought had yeah. In terms of a smaller player's iron like probably a smaller appearance. profile out of, of, of all the seven that we tested. Probably those three. Mm -hmm. I'd say maybe fourth would have probably been kind of P790 and the HMMB. Um, T200 was pretty similar as well. Cobra Forge Tech is maybe a little bit larger profile. So a player that's maybe looking to you know gain a little bit more you know confidence standing over the ball, you know that would be a great option for them as well. Obviously, can't disagree with the distance gains that I was getting. You know, it was the strongest mm -hmm. loft, so it was kind of performing the best with regards to loft and everything. Um, you know, all I'd say is it's very important to come in and, and test your clubs out and com compare them all. I mean, as, as unbiased as I can possibly can be, you know, every player's individual feel and preferences is completely different. So that's exactly. always important to take a look at that. For customers out there watching this, um, maybe they're interested in the player's distance iron category. What advice would you give them to kind of bring them in and get get a fitting done uh, for this type of an iron because these obviously have a lot of benefits. Yeah, so keep in mind, um, it's important to maybe not categorize based on kind of handicap or, or scoring average. A lot of players, they may have a very great short game, but their ball striking sure. may not be as, as good, so the short, short game keeps them in. So that's why I'd maybe lean towards playing maybe a slightly larger, more forgiving club, something you're going to benefit from on, on those misses. Now, if your short game putting is a little suspect, but you're a great ball striker and you're pick, trying to pick up maybe a little bit of distance, you know, these clubs would be a, a great option as well. So it really depends on the type of player, yeah. once again. You know, it's, you can't really just categorize, yeah. you know, based on, on, the, on the scoring average. So yeah, I think absolutely. that's probably the biggest kind of takeaway there. Golfers out there, if you're interested in any of these seven models of player distance iron, uh, somebody like Thomas Campbell would be a great person to talk to whether you do it online at secondswing.com with our certified fitters or you go into a store and speak to a master fitter as well. Uh, obviously great options and get some great advice and knowledge, expertise from guys like this. Um, I would encourage you as well to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more comparisons like this in the future. We go really in depth. We tire Thomas out as he hits about 400 <laughs> shots. We get some data for you as well. So uh, Thomas, thanks for doing that for us. That's a lot of golf shots you hit. It was, yeah, I'm pretty tired now. But <laughs> thank you. Yeah.